creating a classroom or doing all the artwork for a rich task. This is primary three's classroom, so the outside of the classroom is Stirling Castle. Last year when I did it with, I was doing Titanic in primary five, and we had the outside of the classroom was Southampton, so right along here was all the buildings of Southampton, and then the door of the ship, so that you were actually boarding the ship. I'll go in and have a look around the walls. So stained glass windows. Stirling Castle up in the corner. Stirling Bridge. About the Bruce. First thing that we did when we were thinking about decorating our classroom was we planned it because artwork, just like a story, has to have a plan. It can't just be in our head because the whole class are part of it, so we need to see what our walls are going to look like. So we've got three main walls, one back wall, then we've got the windows here, we've got the windows here, and then this little wall up here. Now, I keep the VCOP wall, I keep the literacy wall, because we use that all the time, but I change it to make it into a theme. So the first thing we did was we talked about, didn't we, where our project was going to take place, and it was in Stirling. And we talked a little bit, so we sort of set the scene, so that we had an idea of what our classroom could look like. We then decided that we would have the hills in the background, and we learned the name of them, which were? The Oko Hills. Oko Hills, right. Then we had the big rock or the big hill where the Wallace Monument is now. And what was it called then? The Arctic Cave. Arctic Cave. And then the other big rock, what did it have on it? The Stirling Castle. Right. So we thought this wall could mainly be with the Abbey Craig and we'd have to get Stirling Bridge in. This wall we thought could have the castle up above, looking down on what type of people lived here beside the river. The people of Stirling. Right. Was it the rich people or just the ordinary people? Ordinary. The ordinary people. people. So we, did, we talked about how they would grow their own food, so the fields would all look different. Mm -hmm. And what did they use the river for? Uh, to wash the eat, eat and, and drink. Right. So the river was really important that we had that in the picture. And it was important in this picture too, wasn't it? Yeah. Because we needed for the bridge to go over it. So we've got the river forth in both of our pictures. We thought that our VCLP wall, because we had the ordinary people here, then here we would have the rich people, like Robert the Bruce in the castle. So we made our bricks and we kept the VCLP wall. To make it into a theme, we put the little crowns up above it, we thought, to make it into a theme. Then, to go along with the castle, what buildings had glass? The, the special castles and the, and the churches. Right. So we thought this would be the rich side of the room, so we had all stained glass, and this would be more just the, the everyday people. Okay. So we had this basic plan of how we were going to fit it all into the classroom. And this was the background for everything. So we've got all of this painted, and why did, we kept these up all week, why did they help you, or why did we bother to do them? Can you tell? Okay, good, great. Brooke, how did they help you? It helped me what we were going to do and, and 
what it was going to look like and it really, really helped me. Right? So, throughout the week when we were all busy painting all different mm -hmm. things, did you keep looking back to this? Yes. Right, and did it help? Yes. Great. What about you, Alana? Mm -hmm. Right, so you mean it was nice to see it turning from this just quick scribble into a beautiful classroom. Brilliant, great. Okay, can you remember girls, what did we do next? So we've got the basic background, but there's nobody in it. There's no people, there's no animals, nothing like that. Next we need the houses and the, and the grass for the fields. Right. And the wee people. Okay, so as we learned more, we added to the picture. So the background is up for you, it's already there for you. And then as you learn more, so as we found out what the houses were like, we could add the little houses with the thatched roofs. And we added it into the plan so that if a group's right, you're doing the houses, you go and do that. We, when we learned about the Battle of Stirling Bridge, we added in all the little people, didn't we? And we put it on the plan. We talked about which side. The castle's up here. So what side was it? The Scottish or the English over English. there? English. English. And who was it this side? Scottish. Okay. Now, we then started to look more at what does what flowers does Scotland have growing? Oh, thistles. Thistles. So we thought, where do we want the thistles? So where did we want them? We wanted them at Stirling Castle. Right. <coughs> and we wanted some they want eat to near the near Stirling Bridge. Okay, so we want it and then some near the bridge. Yeah. Okay, and then a group went away and did that. So gradually our picture built up more and more and more. The reason that I like to have the classroom started right at the beginning of the project is because it becomes the, the basis and the stimulus for everything. So if we're doing writing, we can say, right, you were at Stirling Bridge, what could you see? Well, you could see the Opal Hills in the distance. They weren't up close to you. You could see the River Forth. Was the river straight? No, it was winding. Um, tell me about the Abbey Craig. Well, when we did it, you could see it was rocky, there was grass on it, there was rocks, but there was also heather. So it was purple. So it gave ideas for bits of writing. It also helped with understanding. So instead of just trying to picture it all in your head, you could actually look around the room and we could say, right, how would you have felt if you were one of the people living in these little houses? I wish I had some more money so I could afford a warm, uh, a bit, uh, a bit uh, for when the wind came I didn't get wet. Oh, brilliant. Great. So do you think that when you were doing bits of writing or when we were doing lots of talking about it, when you looked up and looked at these pictures, did it help you to think? Yes. Yes? Well, that's why I like to have all the pictures up at the start of the project. Then you just keep adding to them. What about all the words that we put up? What did they help you to do? They helped us to do. They helped us to do like um, up there, up there, we have like some sentences about what it was like in this time, and we used the word words up there, and they helped us to write these sentences. Excellent, great. And we. We had our open day and we, we just needed to look at the wall and it showed us the words what we were to say. Okay, and so the wall gave you information like a book would give you information. And when we were doing our parts, if, we for, if, if, I, if Emma forgot, I would, I would look up there and she would look to me and then I would whisper it to her. Excellent, great. Now, we'll take you over and we'll have a look at a book that we made about everything that we learned when we're doing art. Yeah. Okay. Right, what we've got over here is, we've made a book, which I'll actually take down. And this was to help us focus on everything that we had learned through art. Now, I know 
timetables, curriculum, it's so tight that sometimes the thought of taking three or four days to do all of this artwork, to do the room, you think, I can't fit it all in. But actually it's really, really important because as well as I said it being a stimulus for when they're talking or writing, you can actually, they learn through art. So by the end of the week, we looked at all the things that we had learned and we made a big book, didn't we? And it got up to number 90. So I'll just read a few of the things that we learned. Uh, lots of people were farmers. There was a castle called Stirling Castle. The river was called the River Forth. Poor people's clothes were dull or dark colours. We learned how to make a bridge out of sticks. The bridges in those days were made out of wood. The roofs were thatched. The shapes of stones were all different in Stirling Castle. You don't need to use paintbrushes to paint the sky and grass. So that was an art one. So as well as learning new skills and techniques in art, it was also about learning facts about the project. So it's not just a week of art. Um, you can make 3D thistles, there's another art one. Lots of people were poor. Everything is dark when it's close and light when it's far away. So that was a lesson in perspective when we did the local hills. So we learned loads and loads and loads of things. Now, were you surprised that you could learn so much through art? Yay. Right. Who thought art was just about having fun and not learning anything, just fun? Right. But it turned out you learned loads and loads. Yeah. Okay. Was it a good way to learn? Yes. Was it a good, what did you like about learning through I, art rather than writing or reading? Just for a wee change. I like learning through because we didn't need to write anything because I usually get tired out writing. Uh, so it was a change, a different way to learn. Good, yeah? Well, I like painting because you can learn it. You don't always use paintbrushes for everything. You don't just paint the water blue, you paint it all different colours. Right, so that was a new art technique you learned. Good. Usually in P1, you, you do writing, but when you get upstairs, you get to do like all different kinds of learning. And we did all of this. We did it for one. Mm -hmm. Though you do it in primary one as well, you probably just forgot. But that's what it's about. Learning is about learning in all different ways, so it suits different people. Mm -hmm. So that just is really to show that it, it's not a. It's not an extra thing to be able to fit art in for three or four days. It actually is a big important part of the project. And then you've got it there to just add to as the project goes on. Okay. Right. Okay, you can see from our plan how the picture then came to be. And it also shows you how it just looked like this at the beginning, just with the basics, just to give us an idea of the size even and what was there. And then we started to add more. So when we learned about the Battle of Stirling Bridge, we, all, we looked at the costumes that the soldiers would have worn, we looked at the weapons, we looked at the number of soldiers, and then we added that detail up. We added it in pictures, and we also added it in bits of writing. And we've some of the writings displayed up and amongst the pictures, and some of it we've got in little cards that you can just lift off to read each other's work. We tried to do the art side of it, we looked at textures and we looked at how um, the hills would be a different texture than the grass, would be a different texture than the sky. So we did some sponging, we did some painting, some printing, some wax resist up in the castle, that's wax resist. And then we made the, our 3D thistles, which we just put wire on the back of so that it came out from the wall. Because a picture should have a foreground, a middle ground and a background if you want to make it look as if it's coming out at you like 3D. So we've got the foreground that's right in front of you as the thistles that come out. We've got the middle ground, that's where the bridge is and the people, and then the background is the hills. So if you always have three levels in a picture in a landscape, then that makes it look as if it's coming out of all that. We then just began to add more and more to it, so we've got our coats of arms up here. And if you have a look round the wall, you can see we've got Stirling Castle. 
and we made it still in castle as it was in the time of the Wars of Independence, so it looked different than it does now. When we added the little houses over here at the river, that gave us a chance to focus on village life. So we looked at the clothes that the everyday people would wear, we looked at the fact that they used the river for so many things, that was a lifeline. We also looked at why the little houses were situated where they were, because they were right beside the river for people to use. Then we found out about the great William Wallace, so we've added him. And we looked at different textures and different materials to use to make him. We've got some other freebie things like our uh, banners that stick out from the wall there. And our flags for the king. And then we've got Robert the Bruce over in this corner. So all these things just began to get added. We've also got banners up at the blackboard here. So these all just got added as we went along. Now the one thing sometimes people say to me is, oh but you like art or you're very arty. I, I couldn't do that. You could do that because the basis of this is just long strips of um, wallpaper, wrapping paper that's been sponged or painted, been cut to shape. The children have done all the little figures. The children did the bridge. You know, it's, it's their work, it's their passion. William Wallace, I did an outline for them, same with Robert the Bruce, because we weren't doing a lesson on scaling up of a picture. The lesson was about different textures 